see fast trust trust is the key to our economic and financial system it is the single most important element that allows us to interact and trade 11000 years ago with the emergence of a system of bartering the first men and women started exchanging goods back then people would only trade with other people within their tribe that they knew and trusted but as the years went by and the population started growing exponentially it became harder and harder to personally know and trust everyone moreover people went from exchanging simple objects to trading different kind of assets therefore individuals started calling on middlemen like banks or governments to protect their interests but what happens when the trust we place in such third parties is shattered issues of trust started a very long time ago but the 2008 financial crisis was the last straw trust not only in banks and other financial institutions but also in governmental third parties and big corporations hit rock bottom it was at that very moment that an anonymous person or group of people or maybe a woman created a white paper a peer to peer electronic cash system using the new cryptocurrency bitcoin although you may be familiar with bitcoin you may not be familiar with the technology required for it to work blockchain now just out of curiosity how many of you know bitcoin that's a lot of people and how many of you know what blockchain is and how it works yeah that's a lot less <laughs> so i'm going to tell you what it is and how blockchain works So blockchain is a system that stores information in a network of personal computers called nodes. See, there is no central entity like a bank or a government controlling it. The system is what we call distributed. That means that all the computers in the network have the same information. Imagine the blockchain like a big public ledger that lists all the transactions that have been executed between two parties each transaction is time stamped and immutable that means that once you add a transaction or an information to the blockchain you cannot go back and change it or delete it the people in the network that add and verify the transactions are called miners To do so, they take the transaction information, run it through a secure hash algorithm that provides them with a unique output called a hash. Now, what is important to remember is that only the hash is stored on the blockchain and not the transaction information. That means that if you see or have the hash, you cannot go back and retrieve the transaction information. This ensures privacy. Each hash is added to a ledger and the ledger is stored in a block. Each block is linked to the previous one creating a chain, the blockchain. Of course, the blockchain doesn't store just a list of transactions. It can provide proof of existence for any document like audio files, images, or even complete medical records there are a lot of use cases with blockchain for one main reason the power of blockchain lies in the fact that it can prove that a unique event occurred at a certain time that event can be either a financial transaction or the creation of a new document now This characteristic is very powerful as you can imagine and many sectors are very interested in it like healthcare. In healthcare as well there are many use cases for blockchain. 
for one main reason. Ensuring trust in the medical community, in scientists, or in the pharmaceutical industry is essential to leverage scientific progress and improve the quality of care. I'm only going to present to you one use case because we don't have a lot of time, but if you have any questions about other use cases, feel free to talk, come talk to me at the end. So let me introduce my use case by stating a problem that I believe you have all faced. When you go to the doctors, even if it's in a very critical state, your doctor often has to run a series of tests to know what's going on. Even if the colleagues from another hospital have already done so previously. See, there is no way for a hospital to retrieve the information from another hospital. Of course, that results in a massive loss of time, money, and eventually lives. This brings us to a big problem in the healthcare sector, the lack of interoperability. The medical and scientific communities don't have access to data. And when they finally find the information, it becomes hard to find the patient and ask for consent. But now imagine. Imagine we have a system, like a ledger, let's say, that lists all the information about the patient, all his medical history. And now imagine that the ledger is public and accessible for doctors, nurses, pharmacists, scientists. Imagine that we have a system that allows us to access the data only upon consent given by the patient. Now stop imagining it because it's happening and it's called the blockchain. I'll show you how it works in five really easy to understand steps. First, healthcare providers collect information from the patient. Second, the data is stored in existing databases in hospitals. Then, this is where it gets tricky. A hash is creating from each source of the data and is redirected to the blockchain. Four, the patient decides who has access to his own medical records. And five, healthcare stakeholders can query the blockchain and access the information. Now you're probably wondering how we manage and create access to the information through smart contracts. What are smart contracts? Smart contracts are contracts that are written as code into the blockchain. When a triggering event is hit, the contract automatically executes itself. For instance, here in this case, when a doctor asks for permission to access the information, if the patient gave consent, the contract automatically allows the doctor to see the results. Blockchain and smart contracts provide two big advantages. First, the system is finally patient-centered because the patient now owns his medical records. Of course, the patient cannot just go and modify everything or delete it, but he can decide who has access to the information. We are solving the trust issue in the healthcare system. Second, the blockchain can act like a catalog that lists all the medical records of the patient and all his medical history. That way, the next time you go to the doctors, instead of having him do all the tests again, he will just have to contact his colleagues and ask for the information, of course, with your consent. See, Blockchain is really changing the way we see the healthcare system. It brings trust, interoperability, and security. But be aware that you don't shape a problem 
to fit the technology. You start with the problem and then you find the technology that is better suited for it to solve it. Not the, way the, the other way around. And I see a lot of people trying to use blockchain for anything and everything. Here, in this country, in Romania, we have a great advantage. Unlike in France, the country where I live, and where the same old system has been running for years and it's very hard to change things. Here, we have the opportunity to build a modern, efficient, and patient-centered system. It is a unique opportunity. So please, let me take this opportunity to formally invite you all to be a part of the e-health revolution. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So we have a couple of minutes for questions. Is there any question about blockchain? Yes. Hi. So I understand that you have the option to audit any action that it's performed on the patient. So. Um, or, I mean, track back. Right. Um, yes. So the blockchain acts, like I said, like a diary, where it says that patient Y performed this kind of surgery and had a prescription or went to that hospital. Of course, you cannot see the content of the information because you know there are privacy rules, but you can see what kind of uh, documents have been produced. I don't know if that answers your question. Is there any more questions? Yeah, take advantage of having experts on blockchain. You explained it very well. I think it's a, it's a difficult topic, and yeah, it was it was clear. Yeah, Denise. So there are a lot of people explaining this um, at different conferences. This is what blockchain can do. As far as you know, what is the biggest, most scaled up example of what exists in healthcare in the world? So um, I would say Estonia. So Estonia has, the whole medical system basically is decentralized. Um, they don't really use blockchain as I described it, but they use a technology that's very similar and they have it on a national scale. So that's a really great example of how it could work. And there are a lot of trips organized to Estonia to actually study uh, how it's done. Yeah. I did say earlier that Estonia was very lucky because this can sit on the infrastructure that they've put in for e-services for the country, for everything, which other places don't have. But I agree that it would be interesting to see how they've done it. Yeah, of course, there are a lot of countries that are trying to implement similar systems. For instance, I, I know the French ecosystem because I live there, and there are a lot of initiatives, but of course the bases are not the same, and it's a lot harder to implement this technology. Uh, you give uh, France as, a, uh, as an example. I know that in France uh, there is a system that uh, lets a physician to have access to some patient uh, medical information. And if the patient goes to another part of the country, say in France, uh, he can give access to his information to another physician. Uh, why is that different from uh, patients giving access to uh, physicians? Well, first of all, um, that's a good question because this is how it's in theory, right? But in, in practice, it doesn't really work that way. Um, doctors, of course, ask for consent, but not all the time. And it's really hard to retrieve the information from a city to a, another. So it should work better, but... Yeah, it, that's, it, this may be what you read, but... No, right, but the reality is that it's not all the information. If we're speaking of the National eHealth Agency, which I'm not even sure that they haven't um, 
recently done away with. Uh, it was only for a summary of the clinical record. So um, most people would not have access to anything like this. And it's not just Europe. Even in the US, when I was at HIMSS in February, I was asking all the health IT people, and still interoperability is a big problem. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. No, of course, uh, blockchain would allow to exchange information in a very secured way, and we know that health information is very sensitive, and it should always go through secure networks when it's shared. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so the, he's saying that the whole inf the information is stored in all the computers, so there's no way to lose it. Um, yeah, just to, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the time is up. Anka, thank you so much. Thank you to all, all the other speakers. Join us and discover how the internet changes our lives. See the future. Interactive Central and Eastern Europe Festival. I see fest.